The information in this video will save you money. This applies to any device that uses a lithium ion NMC, which is nickel, manganese and cobalt style battery. And so that pretty much means anything from earbuds to electric cars and everything in between. And also just to note, not all electric cars because some use a different battery chemistry called lithium phosphate and that's all another story. And so I really like to keep things simple. So I've gotten some very complicated concepts and I've narrowed it down to two simple habits that we can aim to maintain. And so the two habits are, number one, avoid charging above 80% and especially when the thermostat is showing a high temperature. And the second rule is to try to aim to have the battery at a bit of a middle state of charge and also aim to do small charge and discharge cycles rather than large charge and discharge cycles. But I'll explain more about what I mean by that later on in the video. So first, habit number one, try to stay below 80% charge. And so there are many reasons why it's not a good idea to charge past 80%. And the biggest reason of which is that it'll make your battery degrade a little bit faster. And to prove my point, I'm going to be referring to a German paper by Dr. Madeleine Ecker, where she tested eight lithium ion batteries in a whole range of conditions. One of them was to charge batteries in a different state of charge at a constant temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. And then after 200 days, they decided to have a look at the capacity of these batteries that have been stored in these different state of charges. And so for the batteries that are stored at 100%, they have fallen to 55% of their original capacity after only 200 days. That's crazy when you think about it. I mean, just how many people would charge their cars up to 100% and then park it out in the hot Australian sun? And then you remember the results of the experiment? That's kind of devastating. But as for the other states of charge for where the batteries have been kept at 50 degrees Celsius, and the batteries that are stored at 30% charge still had 85% of their capacity after 400 days. And so to really simplify the results of this experiment, high charge level combined with high external heat equals a ruined battery. Now onto a, another experiment that was very similar to this. And this is basically identical where those batteries stored at different states of charge, but at only 35 degrees Celsius. And for the battery that stored a 100% charge at 35 degrees Celsius, it still had 95% of its capacity after 400 days. So very minor damage. And so with this being the case, why am I not just saying don't let your batteries get hot as opposed to not saying charge beyond 80%? Well, unfortunately, we usually cannot control the temperature at which our battery is sitting. I mean, we can't control the weather around us. Whereas we can very much control what percentage of charge we charge our batteries to. And furthermore, the degradation to the battery is only part of the reason for why you'd never want to be beyond 80%. Another reason why you really don't want to be going beyond this magical 80 mark is that it's not very efficient with both time and energy costs. And to explain my point, I'll use the Hyundai Ionic 5 as a, an example. And so, say if you wanted to charge this car from 0 to 80%, you could actually do this in as little as 18 minutes. But, if you wanted to charge from 80% to 100%, it'll take an additional 32 minutes. And so, 18 minutes and then 32 minutes. And now, this is the case for all types of batteries, uh, whatever the chemistry may be. And the re reason for this, whatever you call it, is because of a, a thing called the stadium effect. And so if you imagine that you're walking into an empty stadium, you'll be able to get to your allotted seat pretty quickly. But let's just say that you're going to a big crowded stadium, say like the MCG or the Gabba or Suncorp or whatever, and you're one of the last ones in, you'll probably find that there's always going to be people on your way, and every time you walk through a certain alleyway or a certain lane, there's going to be people blocking your way. So you can imagine this sort of happening to electrons as well as they're trying to find the way into your battery into their allotted space. And so that's time. But what about the energy inefficiency that I was referring to? Well, in order to get those the last electrons into the stadium or into the battery, the, the charge is going to be have to, having to push them a little bit harder. And once that pushes them a little bit harder, this generates heat. And this heat is wasted energy or wasted dollars on your electricity bill. And furthermore, because of this heat that has been generated as it's putting these last electrons into your battery, it's then going to trigger your car's thermal management system, which will basically cool down your battery. And so, when you're charging your car from 0 to 80%, basically 100% of your energy is going directly towards energy that you can convert to kilometers down the road. However, from 80 to 100%, you'll have energy that's been accidentally converted into heat, then you'll have some other energy that's been used for the thermal management system to manage that energy that's been accidentally converted to heat, 
And then out of those two factors, whatever is left over from that will then go into your battery. And so that is why it is incredibly inefficient. And for smaller devices, say like a mobile phone that don't have thermal management systems, this heat will just be growing on its own and it'll be making the battery warmer. And obviously it'll be degrading the battery very ever so slightly every time you, you charge up to 100%. And so now the question can be raised, why don't electronics and car companies just restrict the user from being able to charge the battery to 100%? Well, Toyota actually do this for their plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. When the user thinks they've charged their Toyota up to 100%, they've only actually charged it to 90%. And it's just my humble prediction that I think many more companies will be starting to do this in the coming years. And now to the last benefit of uh, charging past 80%. You probably really have seen those dreaded lithium-ion battery fires all over the internet when everyone that's anti-electric vehicle basically shares them on their social media posts and, and yes, those fires do look terrifying. But the intensity of the fire is actually directly related to the state of charge that the battery is in from the start of that fire. So whether it be from a battery pack being pierced or bumped or whatever, if the battery is charged at 100%, you'll see an event that is very similar to the worst things that you've seen on the internet. However, if the battery's only at 10%, you'll probably just see a small puff of smoke and that'll be it. You it is for this reason that when you actually buy a, a brand new product that has a lithium-ion battery in it, you'll find that the state of charge will be very rarely beyond 60%. And this is for two reasons. One being to make it less likely that there is, there is a fire in the logistics chain. And furthermore, if in the logistics chain the batteries happen to be accidentally stored in a very hot area, at least you won't be doing damage to the battery while it well, hasn't even been purchased by the customer yet. And whilst I'm talking about transit, I'll now transit onto my second habit, that'll make your battery last seemingly forever. And that is to aim to try to keep your battery at about a middle state of charge, so between 40 to 60%. And then also aim to do small charge and discharges rather than entire capacity charge and discharges. A battery is that it's most comfortable while it's at a middle state of charge. And whenever you move it to either extreme, it gets uncomfortable. And when it gets uncomfortable, it experiences some minor degradation. And to back up my point here, I'll refer back to this big German fancy experiment. And so an experiment was done where they had groups where they wanted to go through 3,200 charge and discharge cycles, where in group one, they had batteries that had been charged to 100%, then depleted down to zero, then charged to 100%, and so on and so forth. Whereas for the second group, they were charged to 60%, and then discharged to 40, and charged to 60, and discharged to 40. And it was done for the equivalent amount of percentage charges for the full 3,200. So obviously there's a lot more charges and discharges, but the overall amount of charging that happened is the same as the first group. So at the completion of this experiment, after, or after the 3,200 cycles, the 0 to 100 group, all of their batteries experienced a roughly a 50% degradation in capacity. However, the 40 to 60 group only lost 15% of their capacity, or they still had 85% of the original battery strength. And to translate that into an electric car, that means that if you kept your electric car between 40 to 60%, you'll be able to make the battery last 1.2 million kilometers, or 800 miles if you're from that part of the world. And so far and well beyond what the car around the battery would last. And so. Keeping your phone or your car between 40 to 60% in the real world is obviously impossible. But if you were somehow able to do that, it'll give your battery life that is far beyond what you'd need anyway. And so complete compliance to this is unnecessary. But it's a good thing to aim for to try, try to just get some semi-compliance to this habit. And so how do you actually achieve this in the real world? Well, for mobile phones, it's pretty simple. I just strategically put wireless chargers all over the house and all over my work area. And then just say if I'm going for periods where I won't be needing the phone or my smartwatch or whatever, say if I'm having a shower, or then I'll just put it onto a wireless charger for a bit there, it gets a little bit of a micro charge there. And then say if I'm going downstairs and having a quick meal, I'll just start putting another wireless charger there. And so that's how I'm adhering to trying to stay compliant with the second rule for my phone. And as for an electric car, or in my case a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, well, instead of just waiting for the battery to get all the way down and charging it all the way up, I'll just give it a little bit of a charge for about two to three hours after every single drive I do. Obviously, I'm not sticking to these two habits with a 100% compliance rate, but the fact that I'm trying uh, gives me a lot of confidence that my batteries are going to outlive the products that they're powering. And so to end my video, I'll just what my two habits are again. So habit number one, try to stay below 80%, especially when it's hot. And the second rule is try to constantly have the battery in a middle state of charge and aim to do it in small charge and discharge cycles. And so 
I really hope you found this video useful and I also really hope that you're able to do this and save yourself a ton of money as far as resale value for your product or even just making your product last a little bit longer.